Hi, I'm Peter Travers, and this is Popcorn, where we tell you where the action is at the movies. And there's a really wonderful documentary out there now called Winning Time, Reggie Miller versus the New York Knicks. It might as well be called Reggie Miller versus the Knicks and Spike Lee, who is the most annoying Knicks fan in the world, according to this movie. Reggie! 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 <laughs> Anyway, Reggie Miller uh, talked to us at Sundance along with the film's director, Dan Corris, and they got into a lot of the controversy that went on in this against business. But before we talked to Dan and to Reggie, let's take a look at winning time. For Reggie, the Knicks, in Indiana, it was almost a biblical proportion. You had Indiana, the holy city, and you had New York, Sodom and Gomorrah. Indiana, Knicks, woo, those were blood battles. It was our good Midwestern heroes against their big city slippers, Knicks versus Knicks. This is more than just a basketball series. This is a morality play. A passion play that was great, great theater. Reggie Miller, Dan Corris, welcome. Dan, you have made a movie called Winning Time, Reggie Miller versus the New York Knicks. And you're here, and Reggie's here. And so the first question I'm going to ask you, uh -oh. you Reggie, I know it is the first thing, but you know, as a movie critic, I have to ask you, how many stars out of four would you give the movie that Dan has created of your uh, career? Look, my name is, is in the title. Doesn't you, mean anything. You know I'm going to give it four. Come on, Peter. <laughs> my name is in the, the title. The thumbs are up. The, the, the thumbs, thumbs are, are up. up. Come on, four out of four. Are you kidding me? Yeah, we're Even though there's a versus in there, there's like a... Uh... There's a versus, but there's also a winner and a loser, and I feel that we won. <laughs> so I'm going to say four out of four. four. <laughs> but when I was watching this movie, and I'm, you're looking at a little bit of a setup of your life and how you got on the Pacers and how you tried to annoy the New York Knicks in every way possible. Correct. Through every iota of talent you have as an athlete. Correct. And how you tried to psychologically turn Spike Lee, the biggest Knicks fan in the world, <laughs> into a groveling mess of jelly. I think I did a pretty good job. I think I did. <laughs> no, I mean, look, we were taking on the big bullies on the block in the New York Knicks, coming from Indiana, and being a pacer. So, we had to do something. I don't know where it came from. In the heat of the moment, things were said between Spike and I. And I'll leave it at that. But your dear friends in real life. Dear? Dear. <laughs> I, I would, wouldn't necessarily say dear. I would say we're cordial. If he walked in right now, he would probably shake everyone's hand and then probably shake mine. He'd probably shake your hands before he would shake mine, Peter, right? No, not after no. my review of his last one. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Well, I, I mentioned before that Spike, though, does think that he deserves an Academy Award nomination for his performance in, in Winning Time. <laughs> I think he does, actually. The, I think he does. I think he does. I think too. he was off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know how. And the this fact that you two are bashing him, mm -hmm. I want to come I'm out and. I his, didn't. In, I was. In the defense I, I, of he's short delightful. people. <laughs> no, look, in all honesty, I have a lot of respect for Spike. Uh, yes, we are pretty good friends now. Uh, we've done a lot of work uh, since my post-retirement. So uh, I know he's seen the film and... Uh, Loved it. Yeah, so... Flipped out. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Well, yeah, it was great. Okay, it was but I... relief. Watching yourself on screen reliving period of your life that is filled with triumph, but also... Not so trying. There's agony in there as well. Yeah. You know, during the course of all the basketball playoff series I've been in, you get so focused and consumed with, uh, you know, just going on the court and performing. You don't read the newspapers. You're not really watching the news footage or, or what's being said about you because you just want to stay focused and stay in the moment. Um, so having a chance to see the film and all the footage that came out and things that I said and things that people were saying about me and us and the Knicks, and it, I had no idea. You know, when you get a chance to step back and look at things and be like, I can't believe I said some of those things I said. Or I, I, like, I can't believe Spike, you know, coming to Indiana saying some of the things he said. I never knew that until I saw the footage. 
What was the toughest part for you to watch in the movie? Um, I would probably say losing in 1994, um, the game six that we had at home. We had gone up 3 2, the 25 point um, when we won in game five. We're going home to potentially close the Knicks out to move on to the NBA Finals. I have a chance to put the Pacers ahead with a minute or so left on the clock. We're down one. I get fouled going to the free throw line, which you would think is a sure thing. And I missed the first to make the second. And we had been down big that whole game. So I felt if we could have went ahead, psychologically that would have broke them. They would have been done because they were ahead the whole game. Mm -hmm. And you know, Reggie goes to the line, makes them, and that's it. But made one, missed one, and they went on to win that, and they went on to win game seven. So if anything, that's hard for me to watch because it's a free throw. I should make all my free throws. What was the toughest part for you then to get this together the way you wanted it? Who was saying to you, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk about Reggie. Besides your sister who She's says great. that you're the most annoying son of a Can you believe that? I've never well, seen a sister kid. do that. I like, don't he's annoying. Can you? I, I was shocked, you yeah. know? But Cheryl was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Film. And uh, we're very blessed to have everyone we pretty much went out. Everyone, the only yeah. person, Charles Oakley, I would have loved to get Oakley, and uh, that's the one guy that I, that I didn't get. Everyone else, and the other thing, I, I think I interviewed 31 people, and they all made the film. Everyone made the film, which is, so you don't have to make that call. Did you want to, when you were beginning with the idea and focusing really on everything leading up to 1995 and to that three-point shot, mm -hmm. what, how much did you want it to be a biopic? on Reggie. How much did you want to tell the story of him from the beginning? I didn't want it to be a biopic. Mm -hmm. I wanted to frame it as these two cultures, um, uh, a freight train colliding, I mean, um, both in terms of values outside of basketball and in pride or false pride in terms of inventing the game, if you will. And ironically enough, you know, there are some things that fit into that idea. Neither had won a championship in 73. Both had hit the skids in the 70s and the 80s. Both had hired uh, well-known, extremely uh, uh, school coaches. And uh, both were on the rise. They each had, uh, had a young superstar, Reggie and Ewing. So that, that really worked. I, I, a biopic, never. But you had to understand, I felt, who Reggie is. I mean, who, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. And most importantly, what's his passion as a performance artist? Why did, would he perform on this stage so well? What is it? And the part that touched me the most, which is why I, I, I deal with, uh, with his home, you know, coming from a military family, to express himself, his form of expression, like Cheryl, uh, outside the home, and uh, and Cheryl being the dominant sibling for a while, especially in his still years, is. still, still is. <laughs> you know? So so that that that, that to me, because what, what what he says, and I think I blew it actually, the line, uh, it, I mean the Knicks is uh, Cheryl all over again. I I softened up. I got tired at the end of making it. And I lost that fight with my editor because there was another spot to put it in later in the film. <laughs> so I blame myself no. big time on that.